Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. After a while, we are back with another luxury watch unboxing. Today, Patek Philippe. What's in the box? Let's find out. So the first thing to note about this box is that it is fairly large. You can see relative to the size of my hand and my arm that the box is sizable. It has a good amount of depth and volume to it. You can see in profile that this is going to be a Nautilus Travel Time Chronograph. The model launched in 2022 with the blue dial. We're going to do a wrist shot, but also take a look at the hardware and software that you get when you buy perhaps the most useful and polyvalent of Patek Philippe watches. So first, open up the outer box. By the way, notice how everything conforms. I know Panerai guys really get wrapped around the notion of all the boxes and the papers and the stickers and the hang tags corresponding. Well, the very same is true with Patek Philippe. Open up the box, you can see inside, securely bubble wrapped, we have a box in a box. Turn it all around. We're gonna open up that outer box which is really just for shipping, but also notice that inside, once we remove the soft wrap, we have a Patek Philippe cardboard box with the image of a minute repeater governor on it. We're gonna lift this out. You can see that there is nothing underneath it except cushioning. Move that aside, taking a quick look. We're gonna open this up, and this is where things start to get lavish, rich resplendent in a velvety sleeve of Patek Philippe Brown with a lovely metalized logo. Let's pull this out right here. Put that aside for the moment. We have the Patek Philippe Zabrano wood richly varnished display box. Notice that the hardware here is polished and metal, and everything you look at befits a brand of this status and stature. Right there, you can see Patek Fleet. They've even branded the buckle. Let's take a quick look at what you get. Taking a glance at the folio, you can see it has the reference of the watch also. Even, even at the folio cover level has the corresponding serial number. So everything here matches up. This is the inside of the outer box. We're going to open this up and inside we have a leather folio of substantial girth. Taking a quick look, properly branded. There is two halves to it. We'll take a look at the first half off to the left. The Patek Philippe register. This booklet comes with the watch and you can see the original owner did not fill or submit the form, which means you really are getting everything here. And this entitles you to special owner areas on the website and perhaps more pertinent, a free magazine featuring Patek Philippe news as well as lifestyle content. I don't think they're gonna match RM in that regard, but at least they offer many different versions of the register. You just put in your watch, your serial number, what you would like to receive, how you'd like to receive it, the language, and then there are forms in other languages. Taking a look, the Patek Philippe Museum in the heart of Geneva. It's in the old Atelier Reuni building, the case maker that Patek bought back in 1975, 500 years of history. It is quite remarkable. You can see it right there in the heart of Old Geneva, not actually that far from the Pont Hans Wilsdorf, the bridge that will take you to Rolex. You can see it features everything from a library to historic miniature painting, enameling, horology, and it spans the 16th through 21st centuries, as well as the entire history of Patek since 1839. Lots of fun things to do. They have guided tours, they have audio tours, themed tours, you can see right where this is on the map, and then rolling around to the other side, this is how the other half lives, the Patek lifestyle, grand complications, historic pieces, clocks, pocket watches, craft arts, all of it at the Patek Philippe Museum, which really needs to be credited to Philippe Stern. This was his life's work and it is ongoing. So the Patek Philippe Museum, highly recommended, but you do need a ticket, so call ahead. Taking a quick look now, we jump into the nitty gritty. We have a large and fairly generic manual that explains how to use the movement in the Nautilus Travel Time Chronograph. If you want to learn 
a foreign language, you have your choice. If you speak one of these eight, you can Rosetta Stone your way to the other seven using this Travel Time Chronograph Guide. You can see everything you need to know, cautions, preparations, corrections, setting and features. It is all in here, and there is quite a bit. Now, this is the most important part, of, and I, I would even say this, this is the only important part of a Patek Fleet boxed set. If your house is burning and you can only save one thing, it needs to be this. The certificate of origin is the birth certificate of your watch, and while Patek will pull an archive extract on request, they will never reissue this, so it is one and done. I remember back in the Navy with the aviators, they said you would get your flight jacket at the beginning of your career, they would never give you another one, no matter how much you begged. And that is sort of what we have right here. Now, because it is extremely identifying in terms of who and what, I'm going to block off some of the most sensitive information. Taking a quick look here, you can see information about the watch and the general layout of the certificate as well as the signature of Mr. Stern right there. So this is the Patek Philippe Certificate of Origin. There's a little bit of text on the back relating to the original factory warranty, which unfortunately is only two years. So Patek leading in quality, somewhat trailing in warranty coverage. I expect that'll change sooner rather than later. But this is the Certificate of Origin, which has the serial number of the watch, the model of the watch, the origin of the watch, the dealer of the watch, and of course, the first purchaser of the watch. All of that inside this lovely leather and internally suede folio. But now the fun part, let's see what is in this box, because it's an unboxing. And this is the box. Opening it up. Ah, pièce de résistance. Here we have the Patek Philippe Nautilus Travel Time Chronograph 5991A-011. So, quick note, you can remove this little setting block, but there is nothing underneath it. And just so you know, I'm telling you the truth. If you take a look at the bottom side. There's nothing in here that is individually identifying or unique to the box to say. You can see there's a little Patek logo, and unlike a Rolex box, this does not fold down, but it is substantial, well-finished, and attractive. Now, the watch itself, okay. So this watch might be the most useful and all-around versatile watch that Patek Philippe makes. And what we will do here is we will take a close look at the details. I'm gonna put it on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters circumference, the original travel time chronograph, in the Nautilus line came out in 2014 and it replaced the old 5980 Nautilus Chrono. It's not all that large relative to added capability. It's 40.5 millimeters in diameter. It's only 12.9 millimeters thick, 45.5 millimeters from lug to lug. And if you add the end links to the bracelet, it is 51.5 across the wrist. It's a nice thin watch with a ramped case length that will actually slide underneath the cuff. And with 120 meter water resistance, a travel time complication, a date, and yes, a flyback chronograph, you have quite a bit of functions here. Now, of course, Patek Philippe integrates the travel time pushers into the nine o'clock side wing of the Nautilus case. And you got to admit for the addition of chronograph pushers and travel time indexing switches, uh, it really does preserve the Nautilus profile quite well. And it's only half a millimeter thicker than the old Nautilus Chrono. Taking a look here, you can see that the dial now is a blue gradient fade. That was new for 2022. We'll do a quick loom shot so you get a sense of the watch. No shortage of loom. It is a screw down crown in spite of the through case fittings such as the travel time triggers and the chronograph pushers, still 120 meters. You get a 60 minute chrono register. You get an AM PM indicator for both home and local time, a radial date up at the top, vertical clutch, column wheel, automatic winding, and a 55 hour power reserve. Now you also have the ability to superimpose these hour hands to clean up the dial a little bit if you don't want to see them both all the time. Gerald Genta, of course, designing the first Nautilus back in 1976. We didn't get a complicated version of the watch until the 3710 in 1998, but Patek has built out the collection of complicated Nautilus models. On the back, you can see the caliber 28520 and it's free sprung. Six position adjusted, accurate to minus three plus two seconds a day. Four hertz beat rate, crisp column wheel, function cycler with a vertical clutch engagement. Anti-magnetic silicon hairspring, bears the Patek Philippe seal. 
column wheel really is quite crisp. You can see with the vertical clutch, it always starts without a jump. Resets perfectly to the index up at 60 and can be left running on a full-time basis if you just like to have your watch chrono operable at all times, which is sometimes preferable on this model because you can see there is no running seconds. So without the chronograph seconds hand running, it's a very still dial. The case, the dial, the movement, all immaculately hand assembled and especially in the instance of the exterior metal hand finished, really quite beautifully built. Uh, you can see that there is a little push adjuster for the date. That's an underlying feature born of this movement's roots as an annual calendar chronograph. And the movement, although considered to be one of the higher volume Patek calibers, has beautiful features such as black polished screw heads with chamfered slots and circumference, perle on the base plate as well as the rotor center, circular Cote de Genève, mirrored bevels finished by hand, satination on the wheels, and snailing on the edge of the rotor. Quite attractive. And nicely sized for a large modern sports watch. To learn more, reach out to Team Also at the1916company.com for purchase and pricing details. While you're here, one last quick note. First of all, the watch does come with a pusher tool with which you can index this little calendar adjustment, so just keep that in mind. It wasn't pictured, but it is included. Second, this watch features the second generation Nautilus Travel Time Chronograph Clasp. You can see on each side there is a micro adjustment that allows you to add or remove about 1.5 millimeters of extensible length. Also new clasp internally, you can see with twin trigger release and a double folding action with non-sequential closure. And of course that gives you all sorts of flexibility. One or neither of the micro adjustments can be used to fine tune the fit. Now you have the whole story on unboxing of the 5990.